Okay, so here we are today and we're going to service this Morantz, very old, 30 plus years old, this Morantz stereo control console which is a preamp and it's model 3650 and it has a number of issues uh, which I'm hoping will be addressed with uh, contact cleaner. Um, the headphones do does output doesn't work and the phono outputs don't work. Um, there's a weak channel. The right channel is weak, weaker, weak compared to the left channel. And I know there's some issues with contact. So we're going to start off with um, opening this up. The reason I'm doing this YouTube video is because I went on the internet or I went on YouTube in order to find a video of somebody servicing this and there were no videos so I decided I would make one and I do apologize for the background noise since um, my apartment building is being um, there's it's being worked on there's construction a lot of construction and um, and I apologize the camera is completely automatic it's just a crappy Sony camera and um, it's completely automatic there's no I have no control over it so I apologize if the if I get the um, whatever I'm working on is not in the frame I apologize if it's not in focus um, and uh, uh, let's get started so the first thing we have to do is take out four screws on the top and two screws on each side. That'll get us into the case. Okay, so now we get our first look at the inside, and you can see that there's this uh, heavy metal EMI shield covering all the electronics. So there's two screws on each side that have to come out, and then we can get the we can get the uh, shield off. I've already had this unit open several times, so. Um, that's the only thing I have experience with is opening this several times. Otherwise, I have no experience cleaning electrical contacts or anything like that. I've been working on computers for probably more than 25 years, so I've opened up many, 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 many computers and played around with them, and I love opening stuff up. So over here at the front, I can tip this up, we have the radio buttons and on the two end, the two end uh, buttons are just on and off. So they're a little, little different, but the other four buttons are radio buttons. And I don't know if you can see here, here's the contacts in here. There's a big hunk of plastic, so I don't really know exactly where to spray this, the deoxid in but uh, I'll give it a shot. I'm going to put some paper towel underneath the electronics if I can. Doesn't look like I can to try and catch the splashes. Oh yeah, I just realized <coughs> I should take the bottom off too for better access. Forgot that part. There are six screws on the bottom. You don't have to take the feet off. They can stay on. And then there's two little plastic clips that hold on the, um, the left and right side.
Okay, so there's one clip up here. I don't know if you can see it on camera. So you just kind of pry the, the cover off and the clip will pop off. It looks like this. I don't know if you can see that. And then you just pull on the bottom at the other end and the other clip will pop off as well. And that's it for the bottom. Okay, so at the bottom, of course, you can see these are the potentiometers. Um, these are for the contour. And then the switch. Um, the speaker switches are here and here, but they're covered with, with a circuit board. So I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to get at those if I'm going to at all. And um, and then down here we have the the phono switch, phono selector MCMM switch. And then there's the volume control. I think can be accessed from the top. I'm probably going to have to take the front of the unit off because I don't see any other way around it. And these are the head foot um, the dubbing input and output. Yeah, here you can see this is the vol these are the volume potentiometers right here. There's three of them. And then inside here is, is um, and then we have the switches here at the front here. A couple of them are covered by electronics, unfortunately. That's for muting and whatever else. Tone defeat, turnover, filters. So we'll see if we can get some deoxid in there too. Okay, so I did some research. I actually just took a flashlight and looked around inside the case and I realized I was planning to take the aluminum front panel off in order to get access, in order to gain better access to the inside. But what I actually realized was that the right behind the aluminum front face is this steel bracket and it's basically solid except for the openings for the switches and stuff and the sliders. So taking the aluminum front panel off pretty much uh, does no good um, in, in gaining better access to the components that we need to spray with the lube. So I've decided I'm going to leave the front panel on because it's a lot more work to take it off and you have to take all the knobs and switches off and everything and sliders and um, the, I don't see any any point in it so I'm just gonna get going here on the on the uh, on the lubricating of these um, switches at the front might as well start there And the light is not the best, so I'm going to use my little flashlight here. And I'm going to get some paper towel and bunch it up a little bit just for the drips from the lube. And I think I'm going to start at the top, and that way it'll drip down to the other switches. So, I'm going to start behind here, which you won't be able to see, with this first switch. And I'm just going to spray some in there.
So you basically spray it in there and then you actu actuate it. And then um, the can says to wait a few seconds and spray it again, which I haven't seen other YouTubers do, electronics experts. But since the can says to do that, I'm going to do that. And it doesn't hurt to go back and forth on all the switches as you're doing them. Go back and do the other ones again. So you can see the black, pla hopefully you can see the black plastic, maybe you can't, <laughs> going up and down there. Okay, so I'll spray it again. And actuate it again. I expect the second spray is is in order to, is like a rinse. So the first spray is to clean it, and the second spray is to rinse it. That would be my guess. Okay, now I'm going to do the top switches up here. Do the same thing. And there really isn't anywhere to put this. You can see, uh, well, you probably can't see it, but you can definitely see the discoloration on the on the paper towel, which means the oxidation is being cleaned out, which is good. So I'm going to stick this down here at the bottom, but it's going to hit a bunch of stuff on the way down anyway, so. Okay. Oh yeah, these are the radio switches, so I think I'll just spray them all and then and then just switch them all. Now we'll do these other two for tape monitor one and two. And uh, this looks a little more tricky to get at. squirt. Okay, so that's the switches at the top. I'll spin it around here and see what we can do with the bottom ones. Okay, this first one at the top, I don't know if you can see that, this is the uh, phono select switch. The MMMC selector. I find this can is very difficult to spray just a little tiny bit so that it doesn't spray back in your face. Okay, what's next here? We've got these two selector switches for the cartridge load, but to access them, you have to spray from the back which is probably very difficult to see on camera. So you spray in to the back there because they s it slides in and out. You can see it if you look down. And as it slides into the, f the four positions, 
then it's making the contact. These are kind of difficult to turn. Okay, the next one is kind of blocked by a circuit board, which makes it very difficult to get at. Okay, so for the one that's behind the circuit board, I'm going to see if I can get the um, spray nozzle down in there somehow. Apologize for the camera work, but this one is almost impossible to get at, so I won't be able to show you. Or you won't be able to see, rather. For this, I just sprayed the, the one, the first selector knob, and the second one I can't even tell where it is or how to get to it. So, Okay, so we got those two selector switches, and down at the bottom we've got the speaker, the power button, the speaker buttons, and the contour. So the contour potentiometers are here. There's four of them right here. And... Uh, I can see two of the holes where you spray into them, but I can't see the other two holes. So I'm just going to spray down through the, the opening at the top.
I notice right away when I spray the any of these components, they immediately start working. Like you can you can feel how much easier they are to move right away. Right away. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so that's the contour switch. <coughs> I'm just gonna. I see a puddle of of uh, cleaner at the bottom of these potentiometers, so I'm just gonna mop that up a little bit, as best I can. Now below the the uh, contour switch, we have the speaker switches and basically and the power switch below that now the power switch appears to be sealed I don't see anything moving so I I don't know how I could clean it since it's sealed and the speaker switches um, speaker switches I believe are also sealed but I can't even see them So I don't know what to do about those. I have to leave them, I guess. Yeah, the speaker switches seem to be sealed as well. So I don't know what to do with those, so I'm going to leave them. And the power switch is sealed, as far as I can tell, so I'm going to leave that as well. And what else is left here? We've got the sliders. for the balance control and the tone control and and we've got the stereo mode potentiometers which are very hard to see I'll squirt some stuff in there, but see right away, as soon as you spray it, it's uh, much easier to move, much easier to move. Even the second squirt, it gets even easier to move. So on the, the last thing is the volume switch, and on the volume switch there's four potentiometers all in a row. And the one that's closest to the front panel looks like it's going to be very difficult to get to. So I think I may turn the unit up, right side up for that one. Okay, so last but not least we have the volume potentiometers. So we'll just give them a squirt. 
There's four of them. I'm just going to activate, actuate rather, all the other switches that I've cleaned thus far. We've got the speaker switches, but they didn't get sprayed and the power switch didn't get sprayed because they both seem to be sealed. So now we have the, the tape EQ slider, balance slider and the tone control sliders to spray. I think I'll put the unit on its back for this one. Or for these, I should say. Much easier to move. And we've got the tape EQ, which I don't think my dad ever used. And finally, we have the balance slider. Okay, now I think I'm going to give a squirt to the, the phono jack. Since it wasn't, it wasn't working when I tested it. Now whether or not 
That would be the contacts. I have no idea. I don't. I doubt it. <laughs> okay. So, just give it a little squirt in the phono jack. I don't know if you can see that or not. And then we'll plug in the phono. Twist it around. Try and clean off the oxidation if there is any. And I'll do the dubbing jacks as well, although Dad's never used them and at this point never will use them. Okay, so it's been a few days since I worked on this last, and I sprayed everything and tested out the unit and it seems to have cured the problem with the cutting out channel. So I would consider that to be a success. It still has um, a problem with, with the uh, phono amplifier seems to be dead but other than that well and it's got the weak it's got the weak right channel so I don't have the skills or the equipment to troubleshoot either of those problems but at least I was able to solve the channel that was cutting out so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close it back up and then I'm going to clean the face plate and then and then it'll be ready to go back to my dad. Now I have uh, found out some in interesting information about this unit. I phoned a local repair guy, electronics repair guy, and it turned out that he he actually has one of these units and he says they're very rare and if you have one and you're trying to sell it then they're, they go for a pretty penny or he thinks they, sh they would go for a pretty penny so that's, that's kind of nice to know. Not that my dad's looking to sell this one, of course he isn't. So, um, I also found out another interesting bit of information from him. I talked to him for quite a while and he was, he was uh, quite the talker. But it turns out that um, he has experience with this particular unit because his father has one, had one, and his father passed away. So the unit now belongs to the son who I was talking to and he told me that his father had a lot of trouble with the switches on this unit being dirty and his father would repair them would um, spray them with contact cleaner and then within a very short period of time like within within a month or two they would be uh, cutting out again they would be dirty and crackling and what he told me was that th the switches in this unit are different from the switches in other Marantz units particularly older ones and and, and they have this problem where you can spray them with contact cleaner but it doesn't actually solve the problem for very long and he told me that the only way that he's ever found 
to fix the problem is to actually desolder all of the switches, disassemble them, and clean them, um, like physically clean them, like with whatever, cotton swabs or whatever. And he said that the when, when you do disassemble the switches, you find that they're actually like black because they, I don't know, they oxidize so badly or something. Maybe it was, perhaps it was crappier material that they used in these units. Who knows? I mean, this particular one was built in Japan, which means that at that point, by that time, Marantz had, had um, uh, offshored, offshored, if that's a word, the manufacture of its equipment, so it wasn't being made, wasn't being manufactured in Canada or United States or wherever. And um, you know, I'm sure they were taking uh, cost-cutting measures to cheapen the product, well, to cut down costs. But you know, that always amounts to the product being cheapened. And um, Perhaps that's the reason these switches are so problematic. So anyway, as I was saying, the switches, uh, this guy was telling me, have to be desoldered. And then manually cleaned. and then reassembled. He said you have to make sure you don't lose any of the parts for each switch and then cleaned and then reassembled and then resoldered to the board. So he was saying that it's like huge amounts of money in order to get the this this unit in particular. If, if my dad wanted to take it to him and have him um, refurbish it. I found that all to be very interesting. Another interesting thing I found out um, which may be helpful to some of you if you're watching this video, is that um, I mentioned that the unit, the phono, the headphone output was not functioning. It was dead. And I asked this fellow about that. And he actually confirmed for me the sus a suspicion I had, which was that actually this unit does not have a phono, a, he a headphone amplifier. And yeah, and he said, yeah, no, it doesn't have an amplifier. So what it actually does is you have to hook an amplifier, the speaker output from an amplifier into this unit, into the, the back where the um, speaker inputs are. And then the headphones, if you want to listen to headphones, then this unit will um, take the signal coming in from the amplifier and step it down so you don't blow your head off and that's how you get your headphones so that that was really cool to find out because I thought I thought you know you wouldn't need an amplifier to listen to the output from this unit you could just plug in headphones and you'd be able to hear the whatever input you're using but he says no it doesn't have it doesn't have a headphone amplifier built into it and um, and I kind of suspected that maybe that was what what was going on so that's good to know okay so I almost have it closed up again It's very hot in my apartment right now, so if you can see me, if you can see my face, I might look like I'm pretty hot. And I have these very hot incandescent light bulbs on right now, 
unfortunately I have 200 watt bulbs and they throw off an awful lot of heat when it's already like 83 degrees in here Fahrenheit Okay, so I'm just going to grab the Mr. Clean and some Q-tips and I'm going to work on the, the face, cleaning the face plate. Okay, so this is the stuff I'm using. I don't know if you can see that. It's Mr. Clean uh, with Febreze, multi-purpose cleaner. This was recommended by another YouTuber I watched, another electronics guy that was had videos on YouTube that I watched and um, he was actually using the green stuff but I thought he said it was the blue stuff so that's what I bought but I'm sure it's not going to really make a whole lot of difference so I'm just going to spray some on this cloth and then wipe the top I just put some in a spray bottle because the bottle I got. Does not have a spray nozzle on it. It's just the refill kind or whatever. Mix it with water or whatever. Now the guy that I watched on YouTube said that he didn't actually show himself cleaning the unit, <laughs> but he was talking about it. And it sounded to me like he actually sprayed the Mr. Clean on the front of the unit and then and then wiped it with with paper towel he said. I personally I can't see doing that because what if the Mr. Clean gets into the um, into the sliders or whatever. I just don't think that's a very good idea. So what I'm doing is just I just spray some on a on the paper towel and then wipe the unit and the knobs and stuff. Now this volume control has set screws holding it on and I have no idea what size they are. I can't see them. If I had to make a recommendation based on the, the last few minutes of cleaning this, I would say follow that other guy's advice. <laughs> Well, he didn't say anything about taking the front panel off, but what I would recommend is taking the front panel off, which I don't want to do, only because there's this LED light here in the center, and I have no idea if, you know, this comes off in two pieces, right? So this, this center piece, um, you take out these two nuts right here, and then that should allow you to remove the, the center piece, but I don't know... Um, since this this LED light is wired, you know, well, is obviously wired to something. Um, if you try and pull this panel off, I don't know if you'll be able to get it out because of the the LED light. So I don't really want to do that. But I may I may end up doing that because this is not working well at all. This is a lot of work and it's not cleaning very well. The guy also said that he scrubbed it with two different brushes or he was talking, uh, maybe it was on one of his other videos and he was talking about um, he was talking about how he 
he um, how he used like a toothbrush and this dish brush or whatever that he showed in the video. I mean, this is definitely taking it off, but I think it, you know if you took if you took the two face plates off and you then you didn't have the switches in the way. I think you could do a much better job of cleaning it. Much easier job too. At least with the sliders you can move them out of the way and then And when you pull the big knobs off, you can also Oh man, I got to prop it up with something cuz it's killing my hand. No, I'd have to say that this this paper towel method is not good because the paper towel just shreds. And if you go against the aluminum grain, then it um, shreds the paper towel even more. I apologize for the voices you hear in the background. My apartment building is is um, being renovated on the outside, so the guys that are doing all the work are basically outside my windows or very close, you know, just a, a floor or two down, and so you can hear them talking to each other. So I got it all cleaned up, the faceplate cleaned up to the best of my ability. And uh, it certainly looks a lot better than it, it did. No question about that. A lot of years of dirt on this thing. And um, I hope that uh, you liked the video. If you did, please give me a like and subscribe. And uh, again, this has been the Marantz uh, 3650 Stereo Control Console uh, Cleaning Inside and Out. So do take care. Bye-bye.